Welcome to a computer tutoring tutorial. This time we're looking at Power BI and in particular we're going to look at cumulative totals. Had a bit of trouble with this in a recent training session, just thought I'd revisit that. So what do I mean by that? Well there's quite a lot of different types of cumulative totals. Here you can see an example uh, of these ones here. So if I just go down, I've got this sort of standard cumulative total sort of here-ish you can see. Uh, I've got one over the year as well, which uh, just basically I've got one called cumulative year, which sort of like accumulates it all the way up here for the year. We're going to have a look. There's a running total as well. You see it restarts from the beginning there. And then I've got a cumulative year one as well that just focuses on the year. Uh, you can do as if has one value, etc. So we can do some conditions to check to see if this is working or not. All right. And so um, let's get started. I've got a new brand new sort of um, sheet over here. I'll make this available as well on the link down below. So please make sure you click the link to the website uh, so you can get the f most out of this. So first things first, I'll just explain uh, the actual file that we've downloaded. So it's just a date table that I've created in Excel. So I'm just gonna click on Excel at the bottom and go to the dates and you can see, here we go, is a date table. And in the Excel date table, you can see a date starting in 2004. And in fact, the reason for these cumulative totals um, is because the company I was working for was unable to use year to date. It was something that, um, that the year to date changed every year. And instead of doing a list of them, we had a date table that we created using various functions. So, uh, yeah, we've got that there. It's from 2004 all the way down to 2026. Uh, and basically, if you look at the top, you can just see, I just zoom in so you can see here, you've got the dates, that's fine. And then we know what the period is uh, from the dates. We can then work out uh, what week number it is. So it was split up into four uh, week, um, like 13, 12 or 13 periods across the, the year. And each period uh, referred to four weeks. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, so four seven day weeks, so 28 days per period. So we need to match up all of that to make sure the calculations are right. Uh, then it worked out, uh, after it worked out the period, I've got the weekday, I don't know why I've got that there, used it, we can work out the hours worked and the financial year we've got over here. So if I click on the financial year, you can see um, the formula basically that I've got for financial year just here. Uh, which actually just looks to see if the month is greater than or equal to five, because it could be five or not, and is the period less than 12. If that's the case, great, then it's going to be uh, the next period there. So I think that's about right. That might need some tweaking, but basically we've got the calendar period. The purpose of this, if we just swap back, is to go to Power BI and write some cumulative totals. Now, um, you'll probably be aware of the year to date uh, cumulative total. So, um, once we've brought this in the date table, I've related dates to all the dates. So you can see uh, I've got date there uh, here and it's relating to all the dates over here. OK, so uh, when I go to my visualizations, let's get rid of my filters here. Uh, let me just have a quick look, see, and we'll just create some filters. I'm going to use a matrix for this so this can be seen. Just drag this here and then say, for instance, I want to know my financial year. So I'm going to drag my financial year in here. Uh, and then I'm going to drag my period in here. That's great. Uh, you can drill down. As you can see, it's including everything. Uh, the date table is quite long <laughs> and it's got lots of dates that I don't actually use. So um, what I need to do is I'm going to create a key measures table. So I'm going to enter data, click on the enter data button at the top and at the bottom here. Just type in key measures and I can put all my measures in this key measures table should appear on the right hand side eventually there we go so first measure i'm going to create right click and new measure it's just an auto sum uh so i'm going to call that one total revenue uh, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here there we go total revenue uh equals um let us type uh sum of fact internet sales and it's sales amounts that's great. Uh, while I'm there, I'm going to go to modeling and then I change this into pounds and pence. That's good. Let me just zoom back. And then what I'd like to see is I just want to see this. So let's drag, drag total revenue across. And yeah, we've got total revenue there. Let's just make that a little bigger. Drag myself out of way of a little bit here. 
uh, I'm just going to go to grid. In fact, you can go to text here and type text in. Uh, and there we go, text size here, and the grid just make that a little bigger. Yeah, that's great. Oh, just started to rain outside. All right, there we go. So no problems here. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, right, so let's just do uh, a cumulative total. So there's a couple of ways that we can do this. Uh, let's just do what the standard way would be. Uh, so we're going to do another measure just here. I'm just going to go to new measure. I'll zoom in so you can see it uh, as well. So I call this one cumulative period. Okay. So the way that this basically works uh, is it's going to take the calculate. So I'm going to do shift and enter to bring it down. So it's going to use the calculate function, calculate our measure, which will be total revenue. I'm just going to bring that down. I'm doing shift and enter to bring it down to a new line. Um, and then I'm going to use the filter function. I'm going to filter all selected. Uh, and it's going to be of the dim dates period, like so. Okay. And then the next one here, uh, now I need to use the max function. So that's when dim dates um, period is less than or equal to max dim dates period. Okay. So close off the bracket for the uh, max function. Close off the bracket for the filter function and finally close off the bracket for the calculate function. Just make sure we haven't got any errors in there, which is fine. Let's just zoom back. So it looks like there's no errors. Uh, that looks good. Let's change this to pounds and pence just at the top here. Uh, there we go to pounds and pence. Let's click away and let's see if we can use this cumulative, see what problems we have in here. Uh, and as you can see that it's adding this one up. So you see, so it's going three, three, eight. Add this, add this, add this, add this, add this. Well, you can see the problem here. Um, because once I get down to this far here, then it's actually um, carrying. Uh, oh, no, it's fine. Great. So, yeah, actually, I was looking through that, just double checking, and it works absolutely fine. You can see it just soups up this one here. So, let's have a look at this um, formula just here, if I just uh, zoom in a little bit. So, the cumulative period basically is going to calculate this. It's going to filter everything that's selected. So, basically, if there's a dim date period, that's great. And as long as the period is less than or equal to the max, basically, it's going to run that filter to the calculate function to the total revenue, hence, doing a cumulative uh, value. Now, there is a couple of extra things. So I notice here there's a lot of blanks. So if I just click here and roll, scroll down here, there's a lot of blanks here and a lot of repetition here. So one thing that would be good to do is to check to see if there is a value in total um, uh, in the fact internet sales for that particular date. So how do I do that? So if I go back here, uh, let's just adjust the formula a little bit here. So I'm going back and I want to just check to see if, and I'm just going to count the rows of fact internet sales and if it's greater than zero that means there's a value in there that's great it's going to do this calculate function um yeah otherwise i'm going to put uh actually there's nothing else to do i'm just going to put um another column in make sure there's no errors that's good okay let's just uh, have a quick look see and as you can see because it's counting rows, it's greater than zero. You can see it's not including any rows that it doesn't have to. So that's good. Uh, yeah, brilliant. So there we go. So there's a little bit about the cumulative totals uh, there. Um, there's uh, more uh, videos to, to come. But uh, if you've got anything out of this video, then just give it a thumbs up. That's great. Um, and there's also another way we can do this with what they call quick measures as well. So I recall another video for this uh, and keep an eye out as well, because I need an up. There's an update as well to the RAG, the red, amber, green KPI video. There's some updates to Power BI. They always seem to be changing it every couple of months. Um, and I think I did that video over a year ago. So give us a thumbs up. Please, any comments, any suggestions, that would be great. And thank you so much for watching.